I assume so. Oh, what's uh, uh oh I used to know one of those companies that makes those. The decals. What are they? Uh Fat Fathead? Is that what it's called? Fathead? Oh yeah. The brand? <laughs> That's right. They're, they're, the giant yeah, <laughs> the giant football players and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yes, this because I was thinking about like for our house, um, about doing a giant like dolly out painting. Oh, that like covers you know like like an area that would just keep going on and on. Oh, the out now I remember the out painting is you take a, a painting and then you just keep it going out to yeah yeah. Show you. Yeah, that's that's I I think I tried I tried to use it once and I didn't have like i didn't have a good starting picture uh and so i, I couldn't yeah, use it too much the, the key is to like incrementally just do like add 20 percent at a time or something mm. but you can see like what we took the girl the pearl early and earring and like some other classic art and just did some really amazing stuff Hello, yeah i guess i guess at that first 20 percent out that's when you can say oh no 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 no, not like that and then back up but but if they get it right yeah. it's like yeah more like that yeah yeah um and and the examples that y'all had were were really good that the the girl with the the, the pearl Early earring here here it is uh that's yeah. that's it's like it it's also one of those images that also like it looks right and it looks a little wrong you know, you look at it for a little while, and you're like, "Oh, is that architecture? Is that how architecture works?" Uh. Well, uh, if 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 we're gonna play uh, it's cool. armchair Vermeer, yeah. you, you could tell like uh, the the uh, what do they call it? The vanishing point uh -huh. on the perspective. On, yeah, uh, like on the left, you can see there's sort of uh, uh, all, all the way to the left, those those parallel hanging strips mm -hmm. kind of seem to go to one vanishing point, whereas it looks like the ones on the right go to a different vanishing point. Uh, yeah, there is a bit, a bit of a, a multiple, per, multiple. Which is not to take anything away from the incredible accomplishment yeah. of filling. Well, you can do here. if you do a time lapse of it, you'll see, you'll see the a big part of it depends. Like if you add a little bit or a lot at a time, and like how much the model tries to emulate, um, you know what it tries to do. Because like the parts of it where it's like in the in the time lapse, you can see they're no longer the kind of jumps way off to the side and like you're no longer getting it's just spacing it on a small area so that's like if you do a much smaller overlap you can get a lot more coherency but if you go wilder out it just will go free range which is kind of cool yeah yeah but if you there's a if you click on the time lapse on there you can see the uh, the process of it oh yeah let me um, see here uh, oh here yeah oh yeah yeah so you'll see like there and then you'll see like it'll they started to just go way over to the side and so the model only has what's in that box to go on it's oh, like there yeah. it's not They're so there it's like oh it doesn't know it's not at that point it wouldn't be aware of the vanishing point yeah yeah wow. and that's only the beginning y'all uh uh -huh. i'll tell you what man i already got kind of fussy with someone who is uh, uh like the more you play with dolly the more you realize there really is a delicate way of phrasing things to get the results that you want and it's not it's not easy. So when somebody rolls her eyes and and says, you know, something disparaging about it being not real art, I was like, screw you. It's as real art as removing a tree from your photograph or using Photoshop. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. It's a different yeah. thing. It's a new different thing. Yeah. That, the Yeah, exactly. It takes, it's like, oh, so photography is not a real art. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Okay. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, my mind's eye has already captured that image. That's, I don't know who that is. I guess that's my... <laughs> stuffy, my stuffy art determiner, art decider. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, all of it's forcing us to ask a lot of questions, which is good, yeah. you know, about, you know, things, you know, and I, the kind of example that I give is that you could probably create an AI that generate, could generate great music right now, but it's never going to have the experience of having grown up like Billie Eilish. And when you listen to it, it'll just be an AI or, you know, some generic algorithm versus a person who is telling a story about themselves. Okay. And there's a place for both. There's a place for both, but that's always the human, the human element is always going to have value. Yeah, totally. And especially because a lot of these tools, the way these AI tools will look right now, it's, you still have like the outpainting thing, right? You still kind of have to frame up the box and decide when you want to move on to the next thing. You know, there's yeah, big choices. Yeah. yeah. Tell me, tell me when a robot can make choices. Uh, 
Beep, pop, boop. They don't make telltale games for computers. I am choosing to start the Weird Things podcast. Oh, no. Of my own volition. Oh, Free will no. is totally real. The fourth law of robotics. <laughs> <laughs> no podcast. Did you say the fourth law or the fourth wall? I liked them both. <laughs> I, I, I meant fourth law. But but breaking the fourth, the fourth wall, kind of, wall funny, of, yeah. of robotics is pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> All righty, everybody. You, wanna do some, you ready to do some weird things, Andrew? Yes. All right. Then... Uh, go in there, go in there. All right. Well, then uh, let me count you in, Andrew, and we'll get started in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, hello. Notice how faster we get through the intro and we can get to the heart of the show. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I mean, you know, you drop mm-hmm. you, you drop the cruft, you, you, you drop, uh, what what is it, ballast? Yeah, you dropped the ballast. It's segments like these that have really been shortened down in the new reorganization of weird things. Hello, everybody. Yeah, we feel, uh, (laughs) you know, these. We feel whole. We We, feel complete. mm -hmm. And we always do. And this is how we always are set up. We always do. (laughs) So bad. We're so mean. I'm I'm going to start with the best headline of the week related to aerospace. The payload NASA shot into sky with giant gun came down so hard they needed to dig it out with an excavator. <laughs> That's one way to make an interest. Wait. Nas- wait. <laughs> I thought you were talking about DART, but there's no way we got a caterpillar up to to, to the asteroid. Oh no, no, no I think this, I think I know this story. I don't know this. This is spin launch. This is uh oh. this is the spin launch. Then uh, uh, I didn't so, read my text message. <laughs> I, I think it's been yeah. over a year since we talked about spin launch, but this is the one that is just a just a giant. It it reminds me a little bit of 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 the uh, the way they represented uh, the, in the the movie uh, Contact. Uh, the it, 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 j- it just looks like a giant disc that spins, 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 uh, mm-hmm. and then it just launches something, just shoots a bullet into space. It's 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 a carnival to- ride. It's scrambled eggs. It really is. It's a gravitron <laughs> that just releases a missile uh, and and fires it into space. Boy, it looks like a missile too. They really make it missile. So, for, as 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 described, a spin launch is basically a imagine a giant disc turned on its side that spins a payload faster and faster and faster in a vacuum, and then it basically sh- it lets go and it shatters through. They show it like breaking through the seal on there, so it shatters through there goes to a high altitude, and then, in theory, there will be a second stage that would then turn on and then put objects into orbit. Uh, not not for nothing. Uh, I, I was already enamored by just how how outside the box the idea sounded to be in with. Like, for example, uh, and, and to remind everybody stuff we discussed before, is humans don't do so well at 10,000 Gs. <laughs> we tend to liquefy. No. Yeah. But... If you need, I don't know, fuel, which is already liquid, mm. or just protein in liquid form or whatever uh, supplies, then then why not just you know spin it up to ten thousand RPM or more and just just chuck it up into orbit or at least far enough up up into orbit, maybe even suborbital where eventually another ship can catch it and then go to a higher orbit or something. Or even you know you get to a point where you have a booster that um, maybe has an AI or a machine learning thing on its own where it looks at like astronomical data and it can figure out where it is in this in space and it starts to guide. So you just, we just throw it up there. We don't even need to care too much. And the robot, the robot gets it to where it's going. Yeah. It gets, up, gets up there. I mean, well, and, and, uh, and I you don't need to be precise anymore. You can just chuck that thing. Hold, hold on. Now I'm realizing like, okay, let's say what you're sending up is fuel. And uh, so you've got uh, something that is in orbit and it could dip down far enough out of orbit to catch it so so Is this is this too improbable, uh, Andrew? You think think about think about like let's say the spin launch thing is shooting something up at like maybe you know five thousand miles an hour to be in orbit. You need to be at like. 18,000 miles. Oh, got an it. Hour. So, so mm-hmm. it, it would be like, it would be like catching a, a, a stationary softball at that speed, which would be a problem. It'd be like, yeah. I mean, you know, one would be like a bullet. Another one would be like, you know, a paper airplane. Um, there, there is, there is like, I think I know your the physics for like bolos and stuff of like having the loops, like the cables and stuff is something, but I don't think that would work on this at all. Cause this is like that, that has to have a lot of forgiveness. 
Okay, let, I mean, this is... Let me play this game, just uh, before we put a button on my wild speculation and actually read the, the real plans. Um, hey, listen, just time. I'm watching these people chuck stuff into, you know, yeet things into space. <laughs> so nothing's too wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so if what you're sending up is uh, uh, enough fuel uh, in, a, in a pod form, so it goes up, and so you've got something else orbiting, a uh, picture like a, a six-shooter, basically. And so as it's orbiting... It launches backwards, so 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 it it it, it uh, uh, so if it's going eighteen thousand miles an hour, it's able to launch something backwards. So it's roughly the same five thousand miles an hour that the suborbital thing is, uh, but it launches backwards with enough fuel to catch the payload in space and get it all the way the rest of the way up to orbit, mm. where it can rendezvous for a net fuel positive. Uh, excursion. And then it'll come back in well, about 10 hours with the grappling hook to get to the next part of the atmosphere that we couldn't get the first time we went there. I mean, maybe. Oh. Uh, I don't know that the efficiency works out on that. that we, if we if we already have the fuel in space, um, uh, what, what, the, what, the, but, 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 but if we're, if we're able to deliver more fuel than is spent for the, for the operation, I, like, I, I guess I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the fundamentals of just from what we've heard, which I guess we should go over right now. What what we've been yeah, able what, to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, the, the, their their plan is there will be two stages. There will be the you know it'll be the upper stage will be traditional chemical rocket, right? The lower stage is the part that just basically is the mass that gets, or the, it'll be literally a rocket that gets heated and then it turns you know turns on. You know, basically, imagine you just take a rocket, spin it around, let it go, and then when it gets to fifty thousand feet, sixty thousand feet, then it turns on its engines. Mm. And these would be small missile type sized rockets. Like think of the size of sounding rockets. So um, and for small payloads. Uh and that's that's already pretty close to uh, with a different method what uh, Virgin Galactic is doing uh with the uh, star, star, uh, star starship one, spaceship one. Um and uh, uh, in that they they get really really high on an airplane uh I assume uh, uh, in in a near neighborhood, oh. and then they launch the rocket up. But th but even that stays suborbital. But I guess if if you have a rocket and you're no longer worried about G's because you're only sending equipment up, you could probably get a lot more efficiently up to orbit from there. Yeah, there was the the Pegasus was kind of like I think the 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 precursor that first flew in 1990. That was an air launched. Uh, Craft. I think um I think it was able to reach orbital velocities. Yeah, I guess I guess uh. the only thing I don't know is how high up the airplane part of Virgin Galactic goes before they release the the rocket. Yeah. Mm. But, well, but I would imagine had, it, it gets yeah. pretty high up there, pretty uh, close to fifty thousand. Uh yeah, this is from space.com. Virgin Galactic sends paying passengers to space with two vehicles. It uses the carrier aircraft VMS Eve, which brings the spaceship VSS Unity to an altitude of about fifty thousand feet. Hey. At that point, Unity drops away and soars to suborbital space using rocket engines. Yeah, I guess uh uh now, in that case, you have all the time and fuel to get up to that level, and then you launch one payload, then you have to land and do it all again. Whereas if, if, if this uh, slingshot is as efficient as it looks, you could probably move a lot more product a lot faster. Mm. Yeah, and it's not, yeah, it's, think of it as moving, like small, putting small satellites into space. I mean, think of it primarily, that's its mission is just small satellite launch. Yeah. It's not going to be... I don't think it has much potential beyond that, but it rapidly being able to get stuff into space. I uh, now, Andrew, is this a clip of of actually seeing them fire off one of these spin launches that you sent along? I, I believe this is. Yeah, uh, October fourth. So this would be uh, the news headline was that they have completed their tenth flight test, and so we're watching right now. People gather and Five, get ready four, to watch. Three, two, the ultimate one. heat. Whoa. Good luck. <laughs> it really is. Whoa. <laughs> they just shot it. Obviously a very impressive sort of case. Oh, and there's the excavator. Very outside the box thinking. And I saw that throughout everybody we talked to here at Spin Launch. They're, they're thinking about non-traditional challenges. That's so out there. Now that looked pretty small, I will say. The the, the rocket and the payload looked, looked pretty teeny tiny. 
Uh, oh, remind us how big your rocket is, Bryce. <laughs> well, I mean, I got a Civic. I, think well, I don't want to throw that in the air. I mean, g- given given the expense of a microsatellite, uh, you know, just uh, what ten by ten centimeters, uh, mm. it seems like you'd be able to get a lot of those up pretty yeah. easily. Yeah, I. I'm like cool guys. I don't <laughs> quite know. How does it? The question you is know? like, how does it scale, right? Like. Does this either e- either this works with a very specific in- important niche, right, of non-human payloads and small size? Uh, I mean, well, think about think about how SpaceX is put up like three thousand satellites for Starlink, and for other comp- companies that want to compete with that, and that's the problem that OneWeb ran into, and then uh, Amazon's Project Hyper is there's just not enough rockets to get them up there. And so that this is this is addressing the need of that. And if you're doing satellite constellations, you know, communications constellations, then this might be a very viable option because you're going to book thousands of launches with them. Mm. I guess that makes. I guess that's. And like it, like like multiple a day, I would imagine would be possible. Well, if yeah, you got sure. the little gun, you could just. Doom, 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 doom. Well, uh, every, every time you do it, you break the seal, and so you'd have to reseal oh, it and then vacuum, vacuum it and then just run the next one. But but uh, also in terms of, uh, I, I don't know any of the particulars in terms of what uh, materials are being used, but but I'm assuming that they're keeping to relatively safe uh, uh, tensile strengths for all of the materials that involve it. Uh, in, if, you, if you lengthen that arm just one foot, you're going to get a, 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 a logarithmic increase in the amount of force that happens it, um it, and it does look like they have both a the suborbital and an orbital accelerator design so it could be that that is exactly what uh this one that we're where, where they're hoping screen. ahead yeah yeah uh which makes sense i mean of course like yeah you gotta you gotta figure out a way to scale it up uh in some way and bigger's better i mean bigger and the thing here's the thing about space right people like big rockets they want to see a the big damn thing go up <laughs> Yeah, but you know what people like just as much? Machine guns. Satellites in the into space. Now if you do now now if they could, if they get 40 spin launches right next to each other, they go that no, that would be pretty cool. Uh imagine imagine they're able to reload uh, fast enough that it's just this 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 railgun rapid fire going on. They have to build like a space arm to like to reload the, 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 a clip of I don't know. I'm 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 coming up with Rick and Morty ideas now. I'm just I'm just <laughs> pitching Rick and Morty. So uh so so they launched ten of these uh over the uh over what period? Uh over I, the weekend? No, I believe over the last over the last year. And oh, change. okay. I, <laughs> Since we last talked about it, <laughs> <laughs> but they were celebrating their tenth successful launch. Ah, well, I think that's that's something that's that's good. I mean, ten's not nothing, you know. Yeah, I it's. I'm sure they have a plan that's beyond what, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my, that's cool. I'm just going, all right. There's a lot of other crazy ideas for aerospace that I want to see get funded. So, but they're, they, they're moving. I saw the factory, by the way, I'm not inside, but it's outside of it. It's down in long beach. Oh yeah. And, uh, was driving and I looked up and it's a humongous facility. Oh, wow. Oh. I like to imagine Pretty everyone cool. there when they've got a briefcase, they also have to swing it around at all times. <laughs> and whenever they have a dispute in the boardroom, they have to swing their fist and yeah. walk towards the other person. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a funny. There's a story Randy James Randy used to tell about. They did a gag on a uh, candid camera where what they did is they had a suitcase and in it was a flywheel. They take a electric drill and spin the flywheel up to what was really, really fast and set it down on the curb and wait for somebody to pick up and try to walk with it. And you couldn't because you just go all like It was just spinning all over the place. Yeah. (laughs) Apparently, apparently, I guess it was like early Tonight Show or something. They were going to, they wanted to show, they were going to use it as a gag. And Randy was there to help set it up. But the guy who was the head stage hand, Randy says Randy was laying tape out on the floor because you have to follow it along on a straight path. And then Randy's like, I'll set this up here. And the stage is like, no, no, no. I'm the only one that touches it. And Randy's like, well, let me explain what you need to do. And he's like, nope, it's all right. This is our business. We got this. Like, well, and then Randy looks over and like the head of the show is just going, waving him off, going, just let it go, let it go, let it go. And so Randy's like, okay. 
Q live TV oh, and no. the host is announcing the bit. Oh. And you see in the background, the stage hand pick this thing up and start swinging wildly and run into frame on this looking like a maniac. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. The, the head, the head of the show later said, yeah, we've been trying to get rid of this guy for a long time. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. Now we can do it. Now we can do it. Like messing up a broadcast like that was the, Jeez. Was the line. So. Oh, that's amazing. Well, that's, that's that, that. I guess if spin launch doesn't work out, if they can't figure out that orbital, they can, they can figure out how to make TV happenings. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, something something also amazing. Uh, Patreon.com slash weird things. That's where you keep us loud, live, and independent. Keep bringing you the weird every single week. Uh, you get your yeah. own RSS feed. You get exclu- You get access to the After Things podcast where we uh, talk about being an independent creative. We speak openly and honestly. There you go. Check it out. Patreon.com. Yeah, most of the time. Most yeah. of the time. <laughs> Patreon.com slash weird things. So uh, I got this story. I don't think you covered this. I don't think you did. I want you to imagine both of you, uh, you're using your points and you're tucked away in your airplane, in your your, your business class seat. Uh, ooh, okay. uh, ooh. Uh, champagne. Please. I mean, if I'm using my points, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna spend all of them. But but okay. <laughs> let's say let's say there's a double your points weekend. Yeah, <laughs> the two, like, just weekend. the upgrade. They like we like you guys. You guys are Perfect. upgraded. All right, yeah. just ex- just accept it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you get to beta out, test got... Southwest's business class. <laughs> I'm telling a story, Bryce. Sorry, sorry. You're <laughs> chilling out. You're chilling out. You're relaxing. Just enjoy your beverage. Just chill out. Stop trying to micromanage everything. Just think, <laughs> are you smoking? What are you doing there? No, it's my pinky. Just... It's because it's like a fluted glass. It's like a stem glass, but then All I have right. a pinky out. I played the okay. clarinet. The intent... <laughs> All right. All right. I want you to have like you've got your, your, your sleep mask on. Okay, mm-hmm. maybe you got your noise canceling AirPods in, Brian. You too. Oh yeah, okay. okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, it's been a long day. It's great. All right. And then, and then everything's chill, and you're just drifting off to sleep. And then you hear. <laughs> 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 I know this story. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, God. Bryce, 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 did you hear that sound? Uh, n- uh, no, is, is I, th- I, thought, hot, I thought it was in my earbuds. I, uh, yeah, and I'm also wearing air uh, noise canceling earbuds as well. But but yeah, there seemed to be it's, a big it's so loud we can hear them. Uh, uh, yeah, let's take out an earbuds. Me, yeah, bu- no, okay, all right. Shh. That was must have been. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought it was <laughs> Bryce, <laughs> Bryce. I'm gonna look behind me. You look okay. in front of us. I, yeah. I, yeah. Every. I'm just seeing I'm, a bunch of confused people behind us. Everyone's just sitting down, looking around normally. Oh, I'm gonna. Uh oh. Huh? Yeah, I'm not seeing anyone yelling at us. Pay close attention. <laughs> We're, uh, we're not uh, hearing something uh, if, if we're attention. supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, you're relaxed. We're just relaxing. We're go, we are putting my face mask back on, and I am uh, uh, leaning back. I'm getting getting uh, getting myself a little bit of champagne, maybe a, a little bit of orange juice to go I, with it. I, I think it's better if you send the link over, Andrew. Uh, 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 Bryce, I, I don't know this. I don't. Uh, Bryce, I I think that's coming over the PA system. <gasps> yes. Okay. okay. Right. That's what everybody's hearing. That's correct. Over oh, the PA system. No. Now, uh, I mean, fortunately, this this we're on a Southwest Airlines flight in my imagination, so I'd imagine they have a bunch of japes and jokes that they do yeah. uh, for, oh, for each other. Our arms are so tired here at Southwest. Uh, I'm, I'm certain that uh, that this isn't uh, uh, some kind of terrifying breach of security that even the, the crew doesn't understand it, how it's happening. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
so, so th that is a recording of something that was playing over the intercom on a, uh, both on a, on reportedly both an Airbus A321 and a Boeing 737-800. Right. So yeah, multiple planes, multiple flights. How, it, how does that happen? Well, what I, I, I saw, I saw the video from the guy who posted about it and, and I was also confused because if it was over the PA system, aren't they just on the little walkie? Aren't there only so many head handsets? But but then if there are other planes, is it a Bluetooth thing? Have they got AirPods? Are the AirPods getting sentient, Andrew? I don't know. I, <laughs> oh, I no. Neither did the crew. The crew and the captain, the first a flight attendant, then the captain got on and like, I'm sorry, we don't know what is happening. Then the captain says, I'm sorry, we don't know what is happening, which only leaves one logical conclusion, which is somebody not on the plane has figured out a way to. Uh, <laughs> a, a, we don't a, know that. We we don't we don't yeah. know that it it because it, it's. It's a lot of reports. I, I think we have an official response. Our maintenance team thoroughly inspected the aircraft and PA system and determined the sounds were caused by a mechanical issue with the PA amplifier, which raises the sound of the PA system when the engines are running. But I don't... But So who was grunting and groaning? Did the, Does that mean that the, air, the auto volume on the headset is so loud that it picks up the bathroom? That would, ha I mean, it's not a black hat hacker. So you, would, you would, yeah, maybe you'd pick up other sounds there too, though, like the sounds of toilet flushing and stuff. So I think, uh, I, 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 yeah, wait, no, you would. What the, what is going on? I, uh, I, I'm gonna guess I, ghost. I'm gonna say ghost. Ghost. An old tiny I, ghost, not a ghost in the machine. If you played me this audio and said, "What am I listening to?" My first guess would be perhaps somebody who is maybe at a part of the end of the spectrum that has difficulty controlling what they say. And, and then, you know, from based what I'm hearing there and I'm like, is, you know, somebody there basically using some no. old school headphones or something that's broadcasting or waxy.org who's got the, re the report here mentions that there are multiple instances going back to july and all of them are on american airlines uh every known instance has gone through the greater los angeles area including santa Ana or dallas fort worth wow that's uh i mean what if it is a ghost and we're just too stubborn to acknowledge it uh wait, wait, wait first choice ghost uh and we yeah, could just yeah. declare it solved <laughs> Um, yeah. but, but second choice, if it, I mean, that sound does not sound mechanical at all. It doesn't sound like it's been digitized at all at a low fidelity or anything. It sounds like a human grabbing the mic and just groaning into it with the intention to annoy people on the flight. Could it, is there a chance, I guess, so, okay, the, uh, the, uh, so the, the the official response mentions uh, that the PA systems are hardwired with no external access and no Wi-Fi component. Does that mean there's someone out there like freaking these aircrafts? Like there's just a hacker in the greater LA area uh, who goes to to, <laughs> to where is it Houston a lot? Well, uh, I, I, I could Dallas? picture I could picture taking a device and splicing it into the hardwired because it really is. It's like a dumb uh, plane on telephone system. Yeah. Uh, I can picture that being spliced in, but it's pretty clear that they gave it the once over and didn't find anything that mm. makes it harder to perceive. I would say that the heart, yes, but part of the challenge could be like, if they say they're turning this amplifier up really high, that could mean that it becomes more sensitive to inf interference from something on board the plane. Like if somebody had a transmitter or something in RF, like mm. there are a lot of ways that these things, these are complex systems and you start introducing well, then we we amplify this by this amount, and then you get this, and so there's a lot of these other factors that could be like, it, it could just be like a big open receiver waiting for something. Do do we have multiple recordings that could be compared to find out whether or not this is the same recording of grunts and groans being played on each uh, aircraft, I or do if it's not know. If it's a live performance each time? Uh, <laughs> the the man John NYC who initially posted this uh, said. Uh, uh, that there was another video that sounded very, 
in fact, John NYC said, quote, 100% positive, same voice. Um, so that's, that's one person's uh, testimony on that. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I, testimony makes it. And I like that it's just American Airlines. <laughs> yeah. Is there, there oh God, this is a great conundrum. Now I'm imagining there's like a, like a hack the planet sort of guy who doesn't like Bluetooth. And so he's got his own like radio RF wireless headphones. And then he's just, I don't, I, 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 but then that would have to mean he's listening to or intentionally sending across the sound of someone grunt, grunting or vocalizing. I, wow. This yeah. Is a weird and, and, thing. and you would think in a plane where you could see everybody's face and everybody's looking to solve this mystery. Right. It'd be hard to perform it live. Hey, your YouTube is set to man groans for six hours i mean it's got to be a specialized device in a pre-recorded track i would imagine and maybe an antenna specifically pointed in in some way just just as yeah so uh (laughs) my my brother had a co-worker who would sit in his office and sometimes hear (laughs) and then it would go away and then sometimes you sit in his office in here and it was driving him nuts because he couldn't figure out where it was coming from it was completely intermittent um i won't say who but at some point this guy was finally just losing on his wits end and somebody took pity on him and showed him in the air vent. They had taped one of those Halloween cards that opens up and goes, ee! Oh, and they taped that's it so great. whenever the air vent was active, it would blow it open <laughs> oh, and it would my start God. to screech and then close. I mean, uh, y- y- you have to think they've done stuff like uh, uh, cracked open the PA microphone and seen if somebody's put a you know a noisemaker in there. Or... Yeah, but there, there could be some... Let's say you had somebody on the ground crew that was really... Mischievous? Uh, you know, yeah, you know, you could put something in there they would never find. Hmm. There's a there's a theory here uh, uh, from uh, uh, Nick Onderegg, who is uh, an, an engineer, and suggests that it could possibly be random noise filtered through a uh, uh, through a, a noise shaper that would be on part of the plane. So if that if it would not if, be in the PA system, that's not. Uh, this the, this is this is what he says an amp ma- malfunction that inputs the signal through algorithms meant to isolate human voice all the non-human aspects of the random signal stripped out and the results will appear human no now that's that's that, very that's fancy yeah that would be that is a way way complicated explanation uh for that's that's no. uh my uh i too share a magician brain <laughs> and i think that that's more work than we need on this one <laughs> yeah. but uh apparently nick uh nick is basing it off of a tone sweep uh, that he believes he hears in the recording. This is, I, I, if someone out there knows, please let us know. We got the email in the show notes. Uh, what do you, what is this? Uh, haunted. We covered this. Someone, just, someone I mean, either way, it's whether it's haunted flight. or not haunted, uh, it would be scary. Can you imagine being on that flight when like the moment that they, that the crew admits they don't know how this is happening? Yeah. Oh my God. There's something on. The speaker system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the very that would be the worst episode of the Twilight Zone. It's just there's a spooky PA system that is being kind Still of annoying. Better than the first episode of the new Twilight Zone. <laughs> I haven't seen uh, it. So kind of a cool story is the use of creating games now to help elderly old older people like retain their short-term memory and so there's an article on i think it's science daily Let me pull it up again mm-hmm. uh and the guy the goal there is that can you increase the people's ability to remember you know things by usually just game training is game training a viable way to do that and it would seem like some researchers built a thing i think called rhythmizer in which they had tested people with this to see if they could actually remember stuff and they found that after playing these games that they were able to recall with a greater ability. Uh, is it a case where there's multiple opportunities to recall various uh, things that, that, that you're handed or um, was it just a straight up rhythm game? Uh, um, 
they look at they they played the music word of the game Rhythm City, sorry, and um and then people playing a word search game and the difference between the two groups is clear as players progressed in Rhythm City, the ways that target visual perception and selective attention had a knock on effect on short term memory as tested through a face recognition exercise. So, so basically. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, you, you go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to ask, it, it, it sounds to me like uh, adding an external pressure of like a word game is something where um, uh, you're, not, you're not reacting to stuff thrown at you repeatedly for having to make snap movements and decisions, whereas uh, a rhythm game very much is, is, is being fully present in the moment, which, which I, I, can, I can intuitively uh, see the association, but, but having any kind of hard data... Would be a big deal. Let me, yeah, let me read you the this the the paper. This the first day of the section, the significance, which I like that they do that in papers. Like they'll put that up top when they do that. Musical training can improve numerous numerous cognitive functions associated with musical performance. Yet there is limited evidence that musical training may benefit non-musical tasks, and it is unclear how the brain may enable such a transfer benefit. To address this, non-musicians randomized to receive eight weeks of either musical rhythm training or word search training. Memory for faces was assessed pre and post training, while electroencephalography data was recorded to assess the changes in brain activity. Results showed that only musical rhythm training improved face memory, which was associated with increased activity in the superior parietal region of the brain when encoding and maintaining faces. Thus, musical rhythm training can improve face memory by facilitating how the brain encodes and maintains memories. So, so actually playing a musical instrument was already known to have positive effects. And so in this case, simulated musical talent seems to also well, activate the same areas. Well, the, the, the assumption was that music's, music games would increase music ability. Was there a music, would music games improve some other non-music based ability? That was a question here. And they say that it helps increase recall of faces. Hmm. I, I mean... I, I, that's interesting because there was. Uh, do you guys remember the Brain Age games? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, they were BS. But that was a similar idea, right? Of like play these games that stimulate different parts of your brain, and if you do that enough, you're going to get uh, a more active, a more healthy, a younger, quote unquote, younger aged right. brain. Uh, uh, and and I, I guess the corollary would be that would be the equivalent of the word search exercises compared to the musical rhythm games. Uh, I guess I mean it's definitely a lot of like math and and uh, logic sort of puzzles versus and music. a two million dollar settlement to the FTC. Oh no, for making those those claims. The brain games, yeah, yeah. They, they were making claims about that 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 they couldn't support. Yeah. Um, Whereas trombone champ <laughs> can definitely support the claims. Uh, but but I, but I always I, I did always uh, I, I thought it was a long known thing that. Um, you know, participating in involvement in music uh, as you're as you're developing helps. You know, either a sense that of that was probably another myth. That was the Einstein, the baby Einstein thing, or whatever. Or they baby were saying Mozart exposure, effect, or whatever. Yeah, exp yeah, expose your child to this, then they would. And or, that was another I mean, one where I, uh -huh. the evidence didn't support that. Well, I, I I don't mean like you know put in headphones on a on a belly, but I mean being in a ba in band in school or learning a musical instrument. Um, but, but I guess maybe, I don't, yeah, I don't. no, I, 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 to your point. Yeah. I think that, I think that any type of skill you learn that really, that requires engaging neurons in new ways is probably going to be very beneficial. Yeah. And right now, I mean, we don't really, you know, the way that, uh, you know, the human life is shaped, we spend, a, you know, the first uh, 18 to 20 some years learning and then, uh, you know, learning on the school of hard knocks afterwards <laughs> but uh uh it's not exactly like there's like hey it's time for your 30 year old uh a, a booster book and it's here's some more knowledge for you here's how many that planets is kind we of have. wild that uh well i suppose i suppose historically you know if you're uh 30 years old your job was to go kill something and bring it back to the tribe um and so there wasn't a lot of time to propose a intermediary structure of going to college for the second time in your yeah. mid thirties or forties or, or what have you. Yeah. Uh, that's maybe, maybe, maybe that's what we need is we need some Udemy subsidies. We need some government Udemy subsidies for old, old folks. Well, uh, I mean, I know to your point, but I'm like, 
Udemy is like dirt cheap. It's ten bucks on a sale. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, it, I'm the, suggesting the, very ration, <laughs> very effective. The barrier to entry isn't a stimulus check to pay for this. The barrier to entry is somebody going, uh, "I'm going to go watch season three of the show on Netflix instead of learning something." Yeah, well, that, that's what I mean by the shape of human life. You know, we live eighty to hundred ish years, most of us. Uh, and we only go to school really the one, the one time. Well, and and there there might be something too as I think about it. Um, the you have social pressure in near the end of your uh, second decade to either pursue higher education or figure out what you want to do. So it's like you 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 got to uh, uh, develop contribute and to choose. society, right? Um, and then certainly once you hit retirement age, then it's like well you got to get up and move around because you got to get up and move around and engage your brain to fight off a. Uh, 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 cognitive decline, but but there's really no As Brian pressure. Brian struggles to say cognitive yeah. decline. <laughs> no, I'm, I, 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 the irony is not lost. Uh, the uh, but there's no pressure oh, I, in the middle of your it. life to to do anything like that. Like you really get to just pick whatever you want to do. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. Despite my snarky content comments, um, you know, for me it was a few years ago learning to code. Like I just decided to learn to code at a point where, uh writing was a success for me you know i had a pretty good trajectory there but i felt like i didn't i didn't want my next 10 years just to be you know a repeat of my previous 10 years i wanted to build upon that before and i thought that any kind of skills i could get would work out and it turned out it worked out really well you know uh i i i this i must have read this up last year or something but uh there's uh the idea of the stages of life um uh let me see if i can find uh, this more specifically, but uh, there, there's a, a, a an idea about the stages of life, and one of one of the hypothetical ideas is what do the stages look like in further and further human life expectancy? The idea of what is what is the general disposition of a human once they're from a hundred years old to say. 120, 150, 200. Like basically adding a fourth chapter. Uh, what right now is a curiosity of a denouement becomes so common that it's like, well, what what is this fourth chapter? Right. Um, and the the hypothesis was that I guess uh, what we consider the sort of end of life era right now, um, the the human becomes a little more uh, is very broad, very very broad brush I'm stroking here, but uh, more compassionate, <laughs> very compassionate, more community minded, more focused on teaching and passing on a better world. And the, the theory is that as you get past that stage, it reverses and you become more and more self-focused as the body becomes more deteriorate. So I mean that a, that's that's a, that tracks. Just, I mean, definitely, yeah. as as stuff breaks, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a full time job. I mean, that's and, that's why the cliche of old people talking about their their maladies is so true. Is because like that's that's a shared experience. They're all you know fascinated yeah. by like yeah. this used to work. My and back. now it doesn't. Ah, my How back. about you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting. But just the the idea of like you know ultimately. Uh, you would probably hope that we want to bring life expectancy up, but what does that look like? Uh, but of course, we want it to be productive and yeah. and 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 enjoyed. Right. I would like my years one hundred through two hundred to be more like my twenties and thirties, not like my eighties and nineties. It would be just just a bra. I don't know. That would uh, be. That's why you got to buy Weird Things brand fish oil. That's right, <laughs> fish oil from Weird Things. It'll keep you young forever. Um, <laughs> These claims not evaluated by the FTC. You guys want to do picks? Yeah. yeah. Dude. Uh, what about you, Bryce? What have you been watching? I've got a pick. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a uh, uh, this is a bit of a Brycey slicey pick of <laughs> of a of a movie. But I watched this over the weekend. Uh, which, and uh, by the way, oh, yes. yeah, for those unfamiliar, the Bryce slice is where you watch the beginning and the end of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Can't really remember anything that happens in the middle because you were too busy doing something else. Yeah, or or whatever. And so, <laughs> so I turned on uh, the the new Roland Emmerich film Moonfall. I turned it on and I gave myself the the Bryce slice rule that I could just skip ahead whenever I wanted to. But every time I did it, 
I ended up having to skip back about five minutes because this movie is insane. This movie is so wild. I, I, what, what, what is the, uh, give me the writer's room pitch. Hey, look, we need new ideas. Uh, space yeah. is popular. The earth's out. Space is in. What do you oh, got? Right. Kid? Oh, I got it. All right. We got, uh, we got this crazy conspiracy theorist guy and he's got a British accent. So he doesn't seem too crazy. And he steals space data and finds out that the moon is falling. Oh no, moon coming to Earth. Uh, uh, in, okay, so the moon's gonna crash into Earth. That seems uh, yeah. that seems bad. What do we do? We uh, we we get but, uh, uh, oil uh, well drillers to to attach a rocket to it. And and low rent Chris Pratt, a former and disgraced astronaut, had been up to the moon before, and he was disgraced because he saw weird stuff on the moon, and everyone said you're crazy. Apparently, he was right, and uh, it gets. Bigger and dumber from there. I, I was I, I should have gone in expecting Independence Day because that's what this movie is. <laughs> but I, I was expecting more of an arrival, more of a, more of just a little bit of a, a softer touch, just kind of a, 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 a what was, the Netflix one, um, with all the rainbow shiny stuff. Stranger Things. But it, oh, it's only real Stranger Things. No. Um, House but, of Cards. What is it called? It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, I thought it was a, a it's a good spectacle movie. That's the thing is that it's a spectacle movie, and I wasn't expecting a spectacle movie. So what do they do? They strap a rocket to it? Well, I don't want to... They flip an alien switch and, and uh, rockets blast the moon I, away? I don't, don't want to... There's one really big plot point that they set up as a sequel hook, <laughs> and it's really big and dumb. I don't want to spoil it here. Decepticons. But, but uh, maybe we'll talk about it out there. Okay. But yeah, I, I, when I saw the trailer for it, I kept waiting for it to be um, uh, a twist, like that it was actually a comedy. Oh. You know, like, like I kept waiting for like it was just to be like, you know, uh, and actually. It's not really this. It's actually something else, um, you know, that we find out that it's, you know, a completely different kind of movie, but that actually doesn't happen. I thought it was going to be like Tropic Thunder, you know, like a trailer for that. And then uh, and then and then it's like, oh, no, oh. somebody pulled out a script from 1995 mm -hmm. and then every 1995 trope and decided to make this into a movie in 2022, which um, was just and it was Roland Emmerich, who was doing movies in that time period and like. Oh wow, this is real. Yeah, this is. It's. I I bet it would be fun. Like it, I think it would be like honestly, it would be fun to kind of watch a little derisively. I think if you were doing a quote unquote hate watch, you would probably have a lot of fun with it because it is. There's a lot of kind of stupid bits in it, but I think it's a spectacle movie. I think it expects a certain amount of that. So, okay. Moonfall. So things I'm hearing. Uh, <laughs> You can't skip a minute of it, Bryce Castillo. <laughs> the twist is so good, I won't spoil it, Bryce Castillo. <laughs> it's a spectacle, Bryce Castillo. So, 10 out of 10? <laughs> I, you know what? I did, I watched a surprising amount of this movie, given the option to skip any time I wanted. <laughs> right on. So, Moonfall. I think I watched it on HBO or Netflix or something. It's streaming somewhere right now. It's one of those movies that's in the mix right now. Uh, I, I listened to The Economist podcast, The Prince, about the rise of Xi Jinping. Oh, how is that? Uh, it's, uh, it's fascinating, and um, uh, it's, it's a testament to just how powerful the control over the media is, uh, where The Economist is, uh, they're like, well, we think this thing, but we couldn't get anybody to talk to us about it. <laughs> There's this thing. Uh, this person didn't want their voice recorded, so here's an actor reading off of the the letter that they wrote. <laughs> wow. Like uh, it's 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 fascinating. Like they 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 do a whole episode on how um, somebody's job as a, a, a WeChat or whatever the yeah the uh, Wemo is a WeChat. Is? Yeah, uh, uh, basically he was a censor, and he would go to work, and he would be assigned. You have 10:04 a.m to 10.08 a.m. And that would be his entire day is to go through all of the... Oh, the... All, all the of the manual logs of everything and tag everything and decide whether or not this was a proper use 
of uh, this possibly coded phrase or an improper use of it. Wow. Uh, and uh, he said it, it, it was a rough experience. Everybody was in their early 30s just being burnt out from the inside looking at all this stuff. You hear similar stories from the Facebook censors when it comes to you know graphic content and all that stuff. Yeah. And that's not even censorship. That's, that's it, just that's like beheading videos. They're like, uh, they're like, uh, that's a phrase that's similar to one that Xi Jinping used in this one speech that was, you know, that people mock for this thing. And, and the American ones are just like, here's a beheading video. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I don't, uh, uh, I would not want to be a social media moderator for sure. Uh, yeah, so so that's just one episode talking about yeah. the whole don't don't talk about Xi Jinping and uh, they they talk about his upbringing, uh, where, where he came from, and and his speculations on his rise to power. The weird multiple weeks and months gaps uh, in the record where just nobody can seem to find out anything during that time. Oh, uh, it's uh, it's interesting. That was his week. He went to Aspen. He was having a. He was having a fun little winter vacation. Yeah. I was trying to look something up. Which person are we talking about? Uh, uh, the G the G leader G of China. I'm going to, yep. So I thought there was mention the aspect. I'm going to send you. I was came across this title. <laughs> uh oh. And I couldn't find it at first because I remembered a completely different title. Uh, okay, we've got an Amazon <laughs> listing here. Oh my goodness. She's the one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's Read alone. the description. She's a lonely, overworked waitress in a down t in a downbeat Chicago pizza joint, and he's the president of the People's <laughs> Republic of China on a tour to the United States. <laughs> well, there goes our funding from <laughs> from the People's Republic of China. Their stressful, boring lives are about to heat up like a pizza oven after a chance encounter outside Manny's Pizza Barn. Call me G Dada. He G Dada. From there, from there, Delany takes Xi Jinping by the hand and leads him on a whirlwind tour of Chicago, of of Chicago, as they struggle to keep their hands off each that's other. That's always that's always good when there's a typo in the description. Look at the cover art, though. Look, they they just they, they just put his head over some muscly dude's head. <laughs> Or they uh, hired a lookalike for the head, and that's his real body. <laughs> yeah, I bet that's it. I I like that it's twenty one pages. Like some of these books are only like a hundred pages. Yes, they're like short, but like I couldn't find it because I couldn't remember the title. And I was looking for I have a better title. She's got to have it. <laughs> 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 but it's she's i couldn't i'm like why can't i find this i had to find the original article yeah the article was something when it like like badly written male char characters and stuff and it's just it's pretty funny uh there's a uh, there's one section of one of the episodes where they play a quote from bill clinton in the late 90s where he's talking about how uh uh, apparently China's trying to restrict the internet. Good luck with that one. Press Corps laughs like trying to nail Jello to a wall. And then meanwhile, it's just like, man, that is a wall covered in Jello, and it seems pretty stable. <laughs> yeah, play the Kirby enthusiasm theme. Right. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. <laughs> We've got a three-star review that says, a prescient erotica for our times. However, Samantha deducted points for inconsistencies. Given that uh, these sound like uh, familiar complaints, about she it. appears to be working in a New York style pizzeria when it would have been more apt for a place to have a Chicago style pizza. Oh. <laughs> so that's a couple of points. Anyway, off. the Economist <laughs> podcast, the, the Prince, <laughs> about is it, the rise of <laughs> Xi Jinping. Is it? Is it all? How many episodes are out? Uh, I think it's eight or nine. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, they're 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 uh, thirty to forty minutes each. Great, Andrew. My pick is I man, I think the the last few episodes have been really tight. Um, and that's House of Dragon. Oh. So you've been keeping up with that. Uh, I, I've not watched any of it, but I am familiar that they're doing time skips. I don't think that's too much of a spoiler to say. Um uh, uh, are, are you digging that that they're that they're taking them leaps? Yeah, they they've hired the characters that come in to replace the new ones, the older versions are really capable, are really good. Not everybody, you know, if somebody's an old, already actor in their 30s or 40s, they're not going to replace them with somebody else. They'll just age them up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, it worked really well. It worked really, really well because, you know, one of the many things that was frustrating about the later seasons of Game of Thrones was the obstacle of time was just completely erased. Yeah. You know, the world became very, very, very small, and it was just 
kind of like, okay, we just don't care anymore about that. And, and we felt lazy. Whereas here they're like, no, we're going to, Hey, people are going to go do a thing and somebody might be pregnant. And then by the time they go do it, the child's too, you know, like they, they just do really the logistics work out really, but the story, the characters are really, really like, because you feel like you're about to get kind of archetypes from game of Thrones, but then you realize, no, these are their own characters. They're their own, their own trajectories. And I like it. I like, I very much enjoy it. Um, Mm. You know, there was a moment in an episode where, you know, my wife was like, oh, I can't believe this person did this. I'm like, wait for it. And then they're like, oh, and so there's pretty well done. So nice. I, uh, I think I only caught the first few episodes. I, I will probably try to binge it once it's done. Um, but I, I enjoyed the first few episodes that I saw. And uh, yeah, uh, it seems seems pretty capable. Yeah. Right. And I think they've really kept it tight. You feel like you're getting a consistent the whole story here. Um, yeah. And my bonus pick is, of course, uh, still great. Lower decks, Star Trek, Lower decks. Mm. Uh, uh, I, I'm with you. I rather enjoyed this most recent episode, but I, I'm given to understand that Bryce is going to have words on tonight's uh, spoiler. I haven't time. seen the newest one. Okay. I haven't seen the newest one. Yeah. Mm. I might recommend passing it. No. <laughs> we'll talk about it in spoiler okay. time. All right. All right. I think I, I liked it. Uh, this one that I've not seen aside, this show's writing is so tight. It moves so fast. You get so much plot in more than like an hour long show. Yeah. And you do like, you can tell that they really tried to make, <laughs> make the plots at least make sense. I, I'm, now I'm just, I'm just keep teasing up spoiler in time conversations, which I don't need to do, but it's a good show. It is a good show. And this season is, is very capable. <laughs> put that on the on the box art very <laughs> capable I, I i i say the entire season has been fantastic bryce says most of the season absent this episode has and been last very week's good. too and i didn't like last week either which one was last week um oh it was the deep space one. Oh yeah yeah the deep space yeah. Nine one. But anyway that one was too inside its own rear end yeah it's you're not wrong <laughs> it's still fine for me though <laughs> yeah yeah totally any of you watched Andor? Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I keep waiting for it to be not good, and it keeps being good. Uh, this most recent episode, I guess episode five, is the one where uh, it's the first time that Josie joined me for an episode, which is unfortunate because the least happens in this episode. Mm-hmm. But I was proud of the series for making the hard decision to give us a whole episode where really very little happens except for us actually getting to know our characters so we may develop a bond with them which is the harder thing to do and yep. i think will be more rewarding when difficult decisions happen later they uh they wait till yeah, to, to episode good. five for that one huh to tell you about the characters uh <laughs> they, they start with telling you about andor <laughs> oh, oh, oh rice is just with the hot takes <laughs> just uh, i look i'm look i'm the new simon cowell <laughs> have you watched it have you watched andor i did i did watch the first uh, those first three episodes and they didn't take and didn't to take. be honest like if the first three didn't get you I, I don't think there's much after that that's gonna swing in yeah but I I I it's good to hear that you like it it's good to hear that there's a Star Wars that someone that people like <laughs> what, yeah what, I, what about I you Andrew? I haven't seen it I haven't I kind of like Moon Knight was uh-huh. rough for me I never finished Moon Knight and then Obi-Wan just sort of killed me on Disney Plus Oh, uh, I, I would say I, if, if Dr. Brian can write a prescription, j- try those first three hours of Andor. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I have faith in Tony Gilroy. I have faith in that. I, I just was just it was just my enthusiasm levels were just. This is awful. Like, Obi-Wan was awful. Oh, it was just but, but it would have been a great movie. Can we agree on that? Obi-Wan no. as a movie? Oh, okay. Right. No. What What would have been cool? I mean, there's the characters were poorly created, whatever. I just don't know there was anything in there. that And the, 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 like just what felt like a Star Wars Junior novel about Princess Leia's adventure that was just so... Oh, no. I mean, yeah, you would have cut Princess Leia. <laughs> like, she'd be barely there. Oh, really? Oh, but, really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, but that was the whole point. I know. So, <laughs> I... Mm, I, uh... I <laughs> I thought it was awful. I was just was like, oh, it was just, and then like, in little things are driving nuts because the sets would look really cheap. Like you could see, like there's close-up shots. Like wow, like 
I can see the plywood there that right. You know, I reckon like, I, I can almost see the serial number of the air filter that you used <laughs> to, to, and, and sprayed then, glitter paint on. And then the lightsaber effects, like yeah, that looks just like the glowing LED lightsaber you get in the store. Yeah, we're glowing, gonna, yep. you know, like the like you like you got oh you're using a quasar light bar set on a. It was just oh, it was so cheap and so. And it's supposed to be one of the most expensive shows. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I don't want to get too far in the weeds on that one, but yeah. but there's so much I agree. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah. Bryce? Uh, gentlemen. Oh, wait. Did you have a pick? We've already gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you it's want to do a, been... a second round? <laughs> Moon... It's been weird. <laughs> <laughs> hate watch sure. moon fall a second uh, yeah. uh, oh no alrighty everybody we're gonna be back for some <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back alright we'll be back with some can you happy. handle the channel by yourself yeah I got him <laughs> hello everybody uh, a little bit of some video video games talk I'm gonna do a little bit of video games talk I'm playing some video games I'm playing some video games over the weekend I, uh, I started I downloaded started playing a uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. That's the the one that takes place in Caribbean, Havana area, Cuba, eh? And uh, uh, and you're usually doing the pirate thing, and you got the naval battles and stuff. That's that's pretty. That's, that's pretty neat. Pretty pretty nifty. Uh, it's pretty nifty. I've <laughs> I did the one thing is I noticed I I I guess the way that that story works or that game works is that when you want to uh start a, like a story thing then you like are in doing a big story thing for a while and so i've mostly just spent my time jumping around havana doing all the towers and trying to find little things uh and so that's interesting um i've got that on the playstation plus premium ultimate game pass thing and uh and that you know what? That kind of holds up. That that was a PS4 game, but that that kind of holds up, uh, I think, pretty well. It, that that was, I believe, the one right before uh, before they kind of became looter looter games. Um, uh, but it's interesting. It's interesting. The, some of the um, the climbing, free climbing stuff, you could kind of tell they were like ninety percent of the way to like totally nailing it. Um, and it, and also that makes it better than fucking every other video game with, with free running. Um, and then Steed Bonnet. Oh my gosh. You meet Steed Bonnet at the very beginning of that game. You hang out with Steed Bonnet. That's pretty fun. Um, though at that point he's more gentle, he's more gentleman than pirate. He's not really a pirate at all. He's more just a merchant that you save. Unsafe TV the last, do you fall in love with them? No, huh? too soon, too soon to tell. Um, but they're doing, they're, they're. I, I guess I'm not very familiar with the Assassin's Creed stories, but this one is not an assassin. Like, you start off the game by, like, hunting and killing another assass an assassin. One of the, like, Illuminati assassins that you're part of. Uh, and then you just kind of take his place. Um, which is a very interesting way. Because normally, isn't it? I, I thought normally some of those games are about, like, what is the conspiracy? What's the organization that is, you know, trying to control? Is Alex? I think so. But uh, um, but that's 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 been interesting. The other one uh, I played just a little bit of was uh, 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 uh oh I oh yes I've been playing Arcade Paradise. Oh my gosh, Arcade Paradise is so interesting. So Arcade Paradise is a game where you run a uh, your family's laundromat. You run a laundromat and uh, and you sneakily uh, build out an arcade in the back room, um, while your 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 father you you you're like your father owns it, but you are the one who's running it, and so there's no one uh, to to kind of tell you no. Uh, and 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 it, <laughs> you really do just like run an arcade. Like every day you show up and. Maybe there's some trash on the ground, or you're getting some, uh, you're picking gum off the thing, um, and along the way, you actually get like arcade cabinets. They've built arcade games, and 
you like you can set how difficult they are you can set the prices on them the way that you arrange them uh matters the more you play the games the more they get popular and so you kind of get this sort of uh, uh this this uh cycle of uh of, of building building your little arcade uh your little arcade arcade video game arcade what would you call it just an arcade i think just an arcade <laughs> Um, but that's interesting. And like the other thing is like it's still like a laundromat at the front of it. So you can just do laundry all day. And if you do people's laundry, then they'll give you they'll give you money for it too. It's it's really interesting. I'm talking about arcade paradise. Uh oh that's why oh, oh it's a game about doing laundry. Well, it's a game about running an arcade in the back of a laundromat. Okay. Well, I went from interested to not interested to very interested. Yeah. <laughs> and they have like they've got tons of like games arcade games in the game so you actually buy the machines and you place it where you want and then you play it to make it more popular <laughs> am i seeing an apple newton being used in that still oh that's uh what do they call it the, like the, uh, uh, the pc a, protector a palm, or the palm, a palm tr- uh, uh, palm pilot yeah it's something like that they've got their own funny that's great name for it but that's like your pause menu and uh yeah anyway i'm talking about video games here for a little bit Come back guys um, so we're going after things here. Uh, do you, do you have a specific thing you wanted to talk about, Andrew? Oh. I do not. Uh, oh, uh, we're waiting on the room tone to go away. Huh? Oh, no, I was just trying to think of what I was going to say. Oh, sure. okay. Uh, I might have a little something. I've got a little something. I can... Uh, we, we could talk. I, I don't think we're ready for a full download on what we're up to on the YouTube side of things, but I think we can speak to audience turnover. The fact that the expectation that, that people will love your stuff always and follow everything you do is probably something most creators need to let go of. There's, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like on YouTube, uh, <laughs> we're doing some stuff that's getting popular. And as a result, people are unsubscribing and that's very counterintuitive. But what's happening is we're popular enough that we're popping back on the feeds of people who've moved on from our content uh, as we, so even as we bring on new people, we're shedding uh, old people who are no longer following us. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's an okay thing. I guess I just did my whole segment. Kind of, that was it. Yeah. Unless we got, you know what? Let's start with that. Let's do that. And with that opening segment, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to After Things. I'm Brian Brushwood, joined as always by Andrew Main. Hello. And Bryce Castillo. Uh, hi, everybody. Ah, what so like we show? try to do, we all bring a little nugget of wisdom, and huh. that was mine. What do you gentlemen have to share? <laughs> no, come on. Give me, give me <laughs> some more on that. So we're doing shorts on YouTube. And, uh, oh, this is interesting. I typed in Scam Nation in the search, and the first things were some of our shorts that we've made. Yeah, then, they're, they're uh, serious about playing the game right on shorts, or at least uh, making actions consistent with being serious, which is all I can really say at this point. Yeah. So uh, if, you, if you don't know, but you probably do know, shorts are one-minute-long vertical videos on YouTube that kind of take the TikTok paradigm of, you know, you have a swiping feed, you have a, and and it kind of algorithmically decides a little bit what you want. I I feel like uh, just as a as a user of shorts versus TikTok, I feel like they're trying to be I think they're trying I think they're being really stubborn about trying to be YouTube in this thing. Um I don't know. To me, I like the idea of shorts. I like the idea of YouTube having an app that is in this vertical video style, but I just wish it wasn't YouTube. And I know that they do it because like YouTube is a big brand. There's a bunch of already built in users. There's a million great business reasons why you would put it into the YouTube app. I hear you 100% and I agree completely, except as uh, having two multi-million <laughs> sub channels, uh, I want to be grandfathered in and on the fast track to success. So I'm glad it's YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying it shouldn't be YouTube. I'm just saying like it I would use the YouTube Shorts if it was if there was a Shorts app. If it was a separate app cuz I think there are a lot of ways that they are really trying to merge and mesh these things all together that um haven't worked in the past that have been not a long-term <laughs> modalities on YouTube, right? Uh buying and renting movies is like a you can kind of still do it on YouTube. Uh, remember shows? They used to have shows on YouTube, uh, not 
originals, but like a feature right. called shows. Um, all of the YouTube music stuff. It's it's a lot of like if people like it enough, we'll figure out how to really make it intuitive. But it's a chicken and egg situation. Um, in some in some from a from a purely from a user standpoint, to, from someone who has used both of these apps. To be honest, I'm surprised that there's not a shorts only app yet. Uh, I, I, that kind of feels like it would be a slam dunk, especially with their rejuvenated interest in doing it more correctly than they had done it before. It seems to be very clearly a separate marketplace uh, in parallel to the YouTube environment, which I like very much because it allows two angles of attack. If something's too short for long form or, or, or takes too long to get to the point, you can just give the condensed version in shorts. And, and for us, it is, uh, uh, there's a graph that you could summon of how many people are looking at your channel who have never seen content from your channel before and how many are returning views. And when uh, we've got two, uh, two, two channels that have hit, hit maturity uh, and as a result, uh, you know, there's, there's only so many ways to hot glue stuff together to make a weapon and there's only so many different ways to count to 10 using clever NIM strategies or whatever. Um, and this really has been a godsend for us to take our evergreen back catalog, our massive 14 year back catalog of uh, hundreds of episodes and cut them down into multiple pieces and bring them to a new audience uh, that, that seems to be going very well so far. And, and in a way that is native to video, right? Like we've always had Twitter accounts and Facebook has a video feature, I guess we've, there are Facebook pages and around, but like, these channels, uh, the primary text of them is on YouTube, is in video first, and um, uh, and and so I think I think us doing it like this uh, is a, is a better step than like trying to make a famous, a popular Twitter account. Trying to do this on Twitter would not. That's just the it, it, it's the the kind of uh, the 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 use doesn't match there. Well, and and uh, Andrew, uh, I would love to hear if this rings true with you. Uh, getting anybody to change platforms on anything is extraordinarily difficult. If you want people to, if you're sending out a tweet asking people to look at your YouTube video, good luck. Uh, nobody wants to click out of Twitter. They're there for Twitter kind of content. Uh, if somebody is in TikTok and you ask them to jump out of TikTok to sign up for your email list. That's going to be a challenge, but ultimately probably worth it because email lists, you know, e email lists are so valuable. Um, but it's, uh, I, I, I hope, I wish for YouTube success in making this all a same clubhouse environment, mainly because that would help me personally. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. No, you go, Andrew. Well, um, I have thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I I find shorts really, really annoying in YouTube, in the feed, and everywhere else. Like, I think that I get what they're trying to do and 100% just create a new app for it. And I would probably download that app and spend time looking at shorts. <laughs> Emotional overcome here. But my, uh, <clears throat> my YouTube experience is different, way different than what my, I'd, I'd want. If I were to ever use TikTok, way different than what I'd want a TikTok experience for. I like to sit down with some of the stuff that I subscribe to and watch some stuff, not have these 20 second, 30 second things kind of thrown in there that are that are varying quality um i i get so i get why they're doing it and maybe it's work but for me as a user i'm not very excited about them but i would love for them if they had their own app i probably would be because then i would say oh let me pull this out now i'm going to watch some really short form content like i don't use tiktok because like i it is it is the fentanyl of social media you know it is just <laughs> it's just the the it's so good the, at watching every, you watch it that it reveals things about you that make you me uncomfortable. <laughs> well, even even when I first load it up, it just shows me stuff I'm uncomfortable with. I'm like, you don't know anything about me, and I'm already upset that you think that I'm going to like this video, and I don't. And it's like, you know, I'm like, this is, I I'm I'm a I'm a very odd person. Like, I don't like mean humor uh, that are unnecessarily mean at people. I don't like you know. But there are, who are there are different audiences, right? Like, yes, I understand that but where it started from its base assumptions immediately made me disconnect from it yeah you know so that that was and i get i have friends that love love like like high level high functioning professional people who you know are you know knuckle dragging you know mouth you know mouth breathers 
that enjoy TikTok. So I don't, I won't say there's a typical TikTok audience. I don't want to come across like, oh, it's not for me. Like I know very sophisticated people like it. I just not for me. Well, and, it was. and uh, so. Bot Bonnie echoed a very similar uh, sentiment where like she couldn't give TikTok a, a chance because like five out of five times when she first tried it, it was nothing but just extremely loud uh, uh, booty shake videos. <laughs> and she was just like, what? Yeah. Yeah. and she would yeah. just close it. But but uh, for those who eventually find their their niche in, in the TikTok sphere, once they've trained the app to, no, I like this kind of stuff, then you could get uh, uh, one of the Green Brothers yelling at you in a very shrill voice about science headlines. Uh, that's, that's what shows yeah, I'm up for too- me. Yeah. I don't know how much time I want to invest in the CCP understanding my particular taste. Well, and, and so, that's that's another yeah. reason that I hope for a uh, uh, short to work out for YouTube and that right now there really is no competition for TikTok. And uh, much like we were talking about chucking uh, fuel into space or what have you, I would like somebody to be an alternative to the number one. And And I think it's going, whatever we see in terms of competition in the video space will come with a new... Uh, a new paradigm. There was a, a good, an interesting blog post on Daring, Vi- Daring Fireball over the past week about uh, the idea of like an X app, an, an everything app, right? Similar to WeChat in China. Um, but um, uh, I think th- th- at, at the end of that post, Gruber's, Gruber's take is we already like the big over, the big upheavals that we get in computing come from new paradigms, right? There was never. Between you know Windows and Mac OS and Linux, there was never a fourth one that appeared, despite all of the technology becoming greater in in, desk, in desktops. Right? There's not another OS two, uh, RIP. <laughs> exactly. But the, right, like it it needed we needed phone operating systems and iOS and and Android to bring this new era of computing that we're in. And so yeah, I I I like that form of competition as well in this for vid- video social space, right? Um, I want someone from the outside to come in and, and, and at least put a fire under Google's at Google's butt. Uh, I, I, and that the Gruber's commentary and during Fireball stem from Elon Musk pointing out the Elon Musk owns X.com. And the mm-hmm. Twitter, it's going to, uh, because like, you have like WeChat and some of those apps in China, which just do everything. I I think with Twitter, I, this has been ever since probably South by Southwest back in like 2007 or eight when, you know, we signed up, you know, I've been like, they should really get into like video, like really get into video. Like they could have owned video and then they do, well, they did fine. I'm like, no, Vine was a length that was a completely arbitrary dumb length that made, uh, and I think they could have, Twitter could have owned this space a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Twitter, but I would like to see. That. And and part of it is making that audience ready for it, right? Like, you know, if they made Twitter's, if they made videos work better on Twitter, I don't know that I would make it a part of my video watching experience. I go there to read short text. I really don't. I I. I, I don't exactly trust them to do good with video, let alone make something compelling. But but it could be a tab, you know, it could be a thing to show like video video feeds and stuff. I mean, there, I, there may be ways. I just think as an aggregator, like YouTube by itself, like I love YouTube. Somebody had a post last night about like how great of an educational resource is on YouTube is if you know where to look. Like if you if you're paying attention, look around. It's incredible. So yeah. I think there could be room for other things like that. No, it's uh, truly astonishing. I think we've talked about this before, but like uh, what was science fiction at the end of the 90s, 1999 with The Matrix, where you could just download a module and you would know how to do a thing. That's as close to reality as we're likely to get yeah. in the form of YouTube tutorials on everything. Just, you know, you, you find the video that's one minute long and you're like, I know how to remove that tree in Photoshop now. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> like we uh like one of the ones we posted on modern rogue over the over the weekend was at uh jason murphy's infamous nord scream it's he did it during an ad during an ad segment and uh one of one of the comments that i saw that i was glad i that i was glad to see because it was exactly why what i thought was going to happen it said oh thank you for posting this now i don't need to look for the video the other video that it's in every time i want to see the scream 
And at first you might go, oh, well, that's a view taken away from my good long video, my good long 20 minute video. Like, no, <laughs> that's someone who wants to see this, wants to engage with this and wants to be on a video that has the modern robe name on it, seeing this thing. Like it's, it's making, I, I, I that's, that's funny. Cause like that was such a great moment, but I don't remember which episode that was on because it's an ad, which means it was detached from the content of yeah. the video. So I don't know how I'd find it. I had to look it up <laughs> and it was not easy to find necessarily. That's and so little things like that. Um, and, and so that, that's a little bit of what's driving my decision making when it's coming to like what what the clips look like or how they're edited is to try to make them at least a self-contained bit to make them be something on its own is good enough to watch you know sometimes that means it's something that loops sometimes it means it's like one segment of information uh sometimes with scamnation it's like it's this a, is it's a setup. fully contained uh lesson or yeah or it's a fully contained thing or a cut down version of a of something, you know, we did the, the uh, eating fire upside down and that we did the upside down one and then the laying flat one. And they're both full, you know, you sit down and you eat the fire and you talk about it. Um, and so that's my, that's, that's at least my big, I don't know, not philosophy as of yet, but like, that's what's guiding me is like, I, it's got to be good. I, I would want to be able to sit. Th if I can't sit through it, then I can't expect anyone else to. But it's like uh, we were talking with uh, Lamar Wilson on After Talk last week. And he was like, I just don't do like coming soon or, uh, you know, make a big push to like see the full video because people people don't like being pushed around like that. And <laughs> ABC, like always be closing. You have them watching. It's, it's like I'm in the short speed to watch something short. Don't tell me to go to the place where long things live to watch a long thing. Yeah. Uh, that's I'm not your demo. And and yeah, on the on the YouTube side of it, that's where it gets tough, because on the mobile phone, uh, if you're only seeing YouTube on the mobile phone, you would think, oh, shorts are actually pretty well contained. But uh, as we've been doing this on the iPad, Shorts show up in your feed and in your home screen. On the desktop, they show up with an icon. So they, they're not full notifications and bugging a million plus people every day, but they're still showing up in some... Noisy. Uh, they, yeah. They're adding to the clutter in people's feeds. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. had someone in the chat say, it's like, they're fine, but it takes me out of it when I'm watching on TV and I have autoplay and it autoplays uh. a thing. And so hopefully the clips that we're making are at least good that you can give them a try and enjoy that minute. But... I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that's not good like that. So, so I want to uh, touch back on something earlier you brought up about like what happens when you start to expand your audience base or old people come in and see it, whatever. I noticed with books. So when I put out a book, the first four or 500 reviews, I'll be at like 4.6, 4.5 stars. Mm. And then once it expands out beyond the hardcore fans to, general audiences uh that's when it usually goes down a little bit like my newest book is at 4.5 4.4 stars um started off you know i watched that range i watched that happen you know where it started at a point and then it goes you know it drops but then it sort of stays at a point and i think that can kind of interesting thing is to tell you the difference between your hardcore fan and people who casually like you Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, one of the things whenever we publish a uh, uh, long form or short form video that, that I look for is, um, uh, especially on long form, I get nervous when the likes are 99% because that is code for, uh, hello, it's me, the algorithm. I've decided that whatever this is, it's the type of thing that I should only show to your most hardcore fans and not really show to anybody else, which I'm like, well, that's not going to help me in the long run. Yeah. And uh, like on TikTok, that is a very different metric. At least when, in my experience, I have found that video views tend to be about 10 times however many hearts we get on a video. So if we get 100 likes, then then I feel like there's a, a target of about 1,000 views. And uh, sometimes, you know, the app will show it to more people to either get it to that view number or... Uh, maybe it'll push it beyond that like theoretical view number to see if people take off, if, if reaction, if it's a time thing. And um, it's, uh, it's really 
it's not every video, but you go through and it, it's it's scary how often 10% is about there, the likes to views ratio. But I don't want to say, like, say a, a like is 10 views. My my favorite headline for review is they gave me five stars. It was a fine voice thing. Low five. Mostly is very good, but fat, flat. And that's a very sincere, like this person's being very sincere. And, and I think they probably make a very good case for that. So I like low five, low five. You know, I'll take it. I will take it. <laughs> Mostly it is very good, but the ending is a little, wow. All right, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, again, I am. I have my thoughts on the book and what I like and what I don't. I read that like that is a very sincere and I'm grateful that this person actually liked enough of the stuff to gave me five. So I'm very yeah. grateful for this person, what they did. And I just, I love the headline because it's a very, I'm like, oh, this is, you know, like. <laughs> it's, it's, it's someone on the internet being constructive. Well, like or, or, or at least yeah, thoughtful no, cool. yeah. and writing in a way that makes yeah, it clear that they're being thoughtful. Yeah. Yeah. I like the right the three below. There's a four star review, and their 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 thing was they wanted more of another character and its value. Like I don't look at these things. And go oh they don't like I don't think like I write like I've written like some amazing piece that's unassailable or whatever at all. You know I think there's it's for a certain audience it could be really great. Other people might enjoy it. Overall, my books get generally great reviews compared to like the average. So I'm very happy with that. Like I'm you know four and a half stars sort of my median thing, and so it's why I'm continue to have a successful career as a writer. So I look at this stuff and I go, oh, like these, the, the threes, and, threes and fours can be very constructive because it helps you sort of understand like, well, this was where I, I know where I headed, but that I set up a promise for the reader that I didn't deliver on. Or did they create an expectation I didn't realize that I did? Yeah, because it's tough to get that feedback. Well, and, and once, of course, you hit publish, oh. there's there's no backseas, whether it's a video on the Internet or, or a book that you published. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in, in that case, your best job is to note the feedback, not engage with it, not try to fix them or explain what you meant to do or whatever, uh, not immediately pander or cater to it, but just note it, file it away and, and be thankful that somebody gave real thought and, and whether they phrased it well or poorly, or they called you a name or not, you know, something caused that spark, you know? Well, yeah, it helps you understand your audience. And in, in this book was one that it's actually been much better, well-received than I thought it would be because it is way nerdy for the went way off on a tangent because i'm like i just want to write about this and i did and actually it's been really well received you know and so like i'm very grateful for that and i feel like i feel like i'm getting a fair chance by my readers and by people reading it so i'm like i'm grateful very very grateful yeah. that's awesome uh, uh what else we got do we, do we want to do some picks surely uh, there's a, a book that I'm making my way through called Ask. I don't know if I've already recommended it or not, mm -hmm. but oh. um, it's uh, it's it, it it uses a different framework and a different uh, system, and he does something very curious that I've not seen before. As he gets to the the meat of the book, the how to ask stuff, he said, "There's a lot here. Uh, you're probably going to go through this more than once. Do me a favor." Your list, if, if, and I'm, I'm sure it's written differently for the book, but for the audio book, he says, just listen to it. Don't think about your business in specific. Mm -hmm. If you drift off, that's fine. Uh, just, you know, come back and, and try to get the general idea of what I'm going for here. Then go back and second time, really dial down, figure out what you need to change to make this work for your business. Uh, but basically, it's it's something that we've been doing intuitively, which is, I think of it quite simply as um, uh, plant before you harvest. Instead of saying, uh, you know, normally you go to a website, uh, you, you, five seconds passes, and instantly a pop-up demands you take a survey to get a discount, and then you read a one-size-fits-all letter that forces you into a sales funnel and, that, that can't be tailored for everyone. Whereas ask is uh, uh, give enough of a gift of content, then ask not for action not for a sale but ask for clarity like hey would you mind asking answering just two questions great then you give another gift and then what happens is is you create the shape of of what this human on the other side is experiencing what's important to them what they're willing to flex on what they're not willing to flex on and then eventually you when you do ask 
you, you, uh, if somebody says no by not doing a thing, you ask then. You say, hey, I noticed that you didn't go for this offer. Uh, it would really help clear things up. Is it A or is it B or is it C? And it could be anything as silly as uh, this one's a bit too carnish, cartoonish for me to do, but is it because you don't need the product? Is it because the price is too high? Or is it because you hate me? You know, that, that's, that's Oof. too cheap. Yeah. yeah. But the, 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 uh, the engagement is sincere and the listening is sincere. And it gets you to a place where you can ask, uh, well, what part did, did, was, was not clear? And then somebody jots off, uh, I didn't know that this included uh, 12 mastermind Zoom meetings. And, and it's like, oh, great. Now I know to put that closer to the top. Or mm -hmm. uh, by asking, he found out that one of his target demographics was not late 40s, but instead late 50s. And so he changed his advertising because they were using uh, high school hits for the late 40s crowd. And now they moved it to light high school hits to the late 50s crowd, and they were able to see a significant uptick or whatever. So uh, it's, it, it, long story short, the lesson is plant before you harvest, listen to your audience. But um, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying going through it. I, I, I think it's quite good. Nice. Ask. And that's uh, by Ryan Levesque. Levesque, there you go. Uh, I, got a, I, I got a short pick here. Uh, uh, I, I have been playing a video game where you run a laundromat, and it is very, very fun. <laughs> Uh, it's called Arcade Paradise. Uh, you you are you're running your family's laundromat, uh, and unbeknownst to your father, you are building out a little arcade in the back room. And as you go along, you're earning more money and you're playing the games. Uh, they do a fun thing of of all of the game cabinets you can play, and there are a lot of like knockoffs of other games. Right? There's a Pac-Man style game, but it's got this like Grand Theft Auto 3D sort of look. And so when you get caught by the cops, instead of ending your game, uh, your little guy runs onto the street and he's, you run down the level and you have to find another car to get before the cops catch you. Um, you know, they, so they, they, they put little twists on classic games. Um, there's a DDR style game as a rhythm game. And it, it, you're, Brian, you're going to love this. It, it really confused me the first time I played it because the arrows that they show on screen, the columns, the up and down arrows are swapped where they would normally be on DDR. Oh no! So they could be different. <laughs> uh, what was so so uh, to see the gameplay that we're seeing on screen? It it looks almost like a VR game. Is it just a first person thing or? Yeah, it's just in first person. I bet they would. I bet they probably could do a VR version of this. Um, speaking very broadly, but yeah, it's first person. It's it's got a lot of like a lot of charm. There's like when you do chores, the chores also have like video game things so when you're taking out the trash you get like this little uh, uh throw meter and the better you throw it the more money you get for throwing the trash away or uh when you find gum you have to do this like tug of war type game with the gum <laughs> it's kind of gross uh but uh it's been very relaxing and there is a little bit of there's a nice little story in there as well um so uh, if 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 um how big of a time commitment is it? I, I I could tell already it's going to be the kind of thing that you could go back and play a bunch, but yeah, um, uh, a pretty a pretty decent one. It, it, there, it feels like there is um, in terms of game like business games like this, there is a progression to it that goes with the story, but that progression's pretty fast. So I've I've only played for a little while, but I've got like ten or so cabinets. I think they really want you to get in and out pretty quickly, but um, there is a lot if you just really like playing these games or you like. You can do the laundry. You can just do laundry in the game and make good money. Um, you can also do that. So I, I, I uh, so no, I'd say no. There's not a short <laughs> okay. version of the game. All right, but uh, Arcade Paradise. I think it's, I think it's fun and probably something you might overlook. Andrew, there was a, I guess, an internal email at Meta talking about the challenge of getting people there to use their horizons. Uh, that's their VR ruled, um, and they're trying to build sort of momentum and interest in this, and it's been a struggle because this was sort of going to be their big foray into VR and kind of creating the metaverse, but it was sort of kind of complaining that people internally aren't using it. Um, that's a good sign, and, right? Yeah. I I remember when it first came out there, I played with Horizon Worlds, and... Um, you had some good it, things to say it, at first, but it was also pretty early. Did I? Did oh, I? I thought you did. I guess I just remember you talking about I mean, it, and I thought it was. 
it was uh, uh, I forget the name of the other. There's the other sort of world building app that it just kind of emulated a lot of things from there from it. Um, I, I it just felt like sparse in a lot of other things in the design and whatnot. It didn't really feel like Rec Room. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh-huh. Um, it just felt like kind of like them trying to do a version of Rec Room, but you know, Facebook, like I'm, I'm not excited to build a platform on Facebook, given the last time I built a fast, a platform on a Facebook product, what happened to me in the platform. Um, and I would say that as you talk about this other game and you talk about like, we're in this world of meta games of like, you know, meta, like games within games and like kind of worlds. And it sort of feels to me like that's going to be sort of the interesting way that I think we might get to a metaverse or whatever is just a, a really open platform and people building things that are, Worlds within worlds and worlds connected to worlds and not, you know, not start as a bubble that everything goes inside of there, but start as a snowflake that things kind of build from. Yeah. So. Uh, In that regard, um, uh, shouts out to Animal Jam. We talked about this uh, on some other podcast, but Animal Jam is the platform that my kid uses. And uh, I'll be danged if they don't have a tower defense uh, game in there. They have a World of Warcraft game in there. They have uh, like any, uh, uh, most of the archetypical types of games, that you have, whether it's a side scroller, you name it, they've they've created within this world where you you get the Jeep Jops to allow you to play the game. It's, and it's incredible. The, the, there's a non-zero chance the metaverse ends up being a simulation inside of a Minecraft. Yeah, mode. yeah, <laughs> that's what it feels somebody like. Somebody builds yeah Yeah. and to some like why not (laughs) you know like all of the things like metaverse is a very cool idea for gaming and i like to think everything else we live in a pretty interesting metaverse already i mean a world where the internet is just kind of everywhere and you're just always available to get it at any screen of any size. You can walk up to anybody's, you see a terminal anywhere. Yeah. You you know you could click on a browser and have your access all your QR stuff. codes. QR codes are a major metaverse vibe. You know, the, the, the combination of physical and digital. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, I've had like two people retweet this thing. It was like, Somebody did a video and I think it's someplace in, you know, Europe or whatever. And it's just this, the camera pans around the square and you see like a juggler and then somebody playing music and then some people dining. And then you see people riding like one of these complex bicycles together. And it says like the metaverse in real life. Cause it just looked like, you know, what you would expect. When Everything you show is just up bonkers like the, all around you. Yeah. And it was like just a real scene in like, you know, Antwerp or something like that. Yeah. You know how you that love being hilarious. in theme parks twenty four seven. That's the metaverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if what if business meetings were interrupted by jugglers constantly? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh uh you yeah uh, you guys remember when Adult Swim was doing those infomercial uh yeah yeah just, they did one about a college a co- an online college that was all in like a Second Life VR space, but it was infected <laughs> by. Uh, what was his name? Howard, an evil artificial intelligence yeah. that stole all of the Quiznos sub credits that they would give you. <laughs> and so the whole video was all about, I love the, 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 cl- the online classrooms and Howard almost never gets in. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm imagining. <laughs> I found the link to this thing, by the way, I'll show it to you. That was it. All of those are on HBO right now and just so worth watching. Oh, yeah, um, the Adult Swim infomercials, because that's where the Too Many Cooks yeah. comes from. Yeah. Yeah, that was the 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 dog, uh, Alpha Dog or whatever. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, I don't, I don't know if I do. Uh-uh. Which one was yes. that? No, you uh, sent me the wrong link. Um, Hold on. Uh, uh, that was the one with the, like, the, 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 we watched it with, like, the midget dressed as the, do- the little person dressed as the dog. Oh, uh, Alpha Chow, it looks like maybe. Yeah, Alpha Chow, yes. Uh, let's see. Just for Dumper, for all dogs. I can mine the latest in modern technology with research from the best European scientists in the 1930s. And Alpha <laughs> Dog Chow was born. Wait, this is that a, is, is that a reference to eugenics? <laughs> yeah. Slim down, but I still wanted more for him. That's why I developed the Alpha Dog Total Nutrition System to turn your Jack Russell into a Jacked Russell. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. I want to turn my Jack yeah. Russell into a Jacked Russell. 
Talk about wish. Uh, I sent you the link to that. What if the metaverse in metaverse in real life? There we go. As advertised, one person dancing by himself, an abnormally tall person, <laughs> person with polka dots, doing crazy mime work, a lone guy on a scooter. People on the bikes, oh my god. <laughs> Six people riding one bike. This is a mess. We need some cars in here to mess this up. <laughs> people getting married. Getting married. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was worth that was worth the wait. <laughs> All right, how's it been? Uh it's been after. Hey, there we go, everybody. Alrighty, so thank you so much for joining us here for the Weird Things and After Things program. We'll be back in about two, about three hours with uh, Chord Killers. We're going to have Meryl Barr on. Got a lot of good spoiler in time. And we're all going to sing the praises of all the shows. Mm, or will we? Mm. Yes, Bryce, we will. That's a spoiler oh. for our spoiler in time. Oh, uh, Alrighty, everybody, we're going to go offline. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you.